Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have with us Professor Leon Morenos from the School of Planning and Architecture. We are going to discuss the smart cities. Currently, there's a hype that we're going to have smart cities. It's not something specific to India, but India we've chosen 100 cities to be the quote unquote smart cities. So, what distinguishes the smart cities from the not so smart cities in terms of the basic concept of the city? The smart city. Uh, the way it's sort of, there is no official definition, but um, the larger sort of ideology that's driving it is that we can use information technology in order to either make the city more efficient or rationalize resources. So this is basically what's driving the larger project of the smart city. You know, the fundamental issue for a city to me, as a, being a citizen, as it were, is that what is a city for? Is it for the people? Is it for public good? Is it for uh, essentially a set of economic activities that go into the city? Or is it for the real estate developers who develop the city? So there could be various ways of looking at a city. And do you think the smart city in this sense is a way of looking at the city, how to maximize the data that is being generated within the city? Well, you know, when the when the smart city sort of the first trust came out, I remember seeing a concept note on one on I think the smart city website. It had Comic Sans font on it, and there was a funnel-like st structure. And the entire goal of the smart city was competitiveness. So I mean, unlike um, well, I would think larger goals would be about mm, giving people a healthier environment. Uh, conditions for economic prosperity and services like that. Unfortunately, it looks like the smart city, at least the initial way in which it was conceived, was to sort of bring about competitiveness. And this drives back to the larger concept of global cities and, you know, the way in which one was able to, to classify them based on how um, finance would move in and out, etc. So I think the smart cities are, in some ways, a new avatar of the global city phenomenon that Saskin had. That's, that's an interesting uh, proposition. Now that means there are also two kinds of problems you get. One is you want to set up a smart city, quote unquote, in virgin territory. That is rural areas, you want to grow a new city and you start from the beginning having it as quote unquote a smart city, which has been tried in a couple of places, South Korea, there is one case, mm -hmm. there are other cases in other uh, developing countries. Mm -hmm. And then there is a smart city, for instance, which already in a cit is a city, Barcelona, London, Delhi, which are already cities. Mm -hmm. Then how do you look at these cities? Uh, you can't really have a common template for both of these two kinds of cities, can you? I don't think, yeah, you're absolutely right in that um, we can't really have a similar template and it's kind. It's also quite uh, um, unique to the Indian phenomenon in that sense where it's not really, again, when you talk about Songdo in South Africa, or I think Mazda city, these were, you're right, they were virgin uh, sort of cities that sprung out in the middle of nowhere. Well, as here, we've actually seen uh, cities that have competed for smart city funding and um, about 100 acres to 500 acres or some of, or the, of that nature has sort of been allocated for uh, major interventions and I think there have been studies that suggest about 97% of the funding is being spent on 3% of the land. So it's, uh, it's uh, it's sort of unique in the Indian, uh, in the way the Indian smart city project is. Is it then creating small enclaves, essentially enclaves for essentially well-off, wealthy individuals or upper middle class who will get quote unquote global lifestyles in this three percent of the uh, of the space? I think that that's where the paradox lies, in the sense that uh, for the city to be sustainable, uh, the uh, uh, what's going to drive the city is going to be data. It's going to be data driven. And uh, these small smart enclaves, uh, for instance in Delhi where we're sitting, uh, is just com uh, confined to the NDMC area. And so these, uh, so it's how, the, uh, how these small little en enclaves are going to survive on just this much of data is a little, it, it sort of, it beggars belief that it's only going to be uh, 
uh, sort of focused on this small portion of land because it doesn't make sense economically or in the long term. Yeah. Shall we say that it doesn't really make sense to consider a city uh, on 3% of its land yeah. when you, or 3% of its citizens, but the city is relatively an organic whole in the way the various parts mesh into it, the people who work, the people who live even of the fat of the land, that they also need work for, for their survival. And when you therefore look at the city, that the older way of looking at the city was planning the city as a whole. And without that, this kind of vision really doesn't work for a city. I'm not so sure about the master plan effort also, which was looking at the city as a whole, because I don't think it looked at the city as an organic whole. Um, our master plans are at best sort of looking at cities as machines that try to then see if how one cog may have worked in the other. and. Um, you know, and therefore, it, with, with that metaphor comes in all the trouble of things breaking down and being replaced and some things becoming obsolete and stuff. But uh, I think the larger point where, uh, for me at least, when I look at the smart city is that it completely ignores the larger concepts. We've had constitutional reforms like the 74th Amendment, which says that ordinary people are capable of being able to figure out their urban futures and we're not giving them a chance to do that. It's uh, extremely top, I mean, driven from the center in the way it's conceived. And it's also going to be run by anonymous machines that are going to rationalize how, uh, you, you know, in, in some of these smart cities, they talk about the fact that, you know, this, the machines are going to determine when you open your window or whether you need to open your window or when an elevator will come up to take you down and it, because it's rationalizing resources. So I think it takes away all of those larger. So it's a further, uh, shall we say, shift to an even more alienated uh, city. Sure. But coming to the other issue that you just raised about the 74th Amendment, uh, and so on, which basically meant that the local self-government authorities had certain powers, which the citizens decided then the future of the city based on the elected representatives. Now, what the smart city agenda seems to be, that they will actually give away all their revenues mm -hmm. to a certain body, which will be non-elected, who will take decisions for the city on their behalf. Yeah. And they will only have the power to give the money, but no authority to decide what they will do. There's a special purpose vehicles and all which are being created to run the so-called smart city. Isn't that completely a violation of the fundamental rights of the citizen? Absolutely. The uh, and that's problematic because, um, again, uh, like I said, we have a constitutional mandate that does suggest that we can make our own plans. And um, <clears throat> we, have, we now have a CEO. It's not even <laughs> a CEO who will run a company. And that's how the special vehicle, the special purpose vehicle is actually registered under the Companies Act, who will, uh, again, who has no accountability to the local populace, who will be selected by the center to oversee this uh, particular company. And uh, I think for 30 years or something like that, all the revenues will be going back to uh, go back to the, to the smart purpose vehicle in order to pay back the cost, capital costs. It's also quite uh, interesting because if you were to look at the most neoliberal of our cities in India, I think Navi Mumbai is, you <laughs> will come closest to that. They actually saw through this and refused smart city status the first time around. I think they've been forced to now try and uh, accept funding for the smart city status. But this was something they said. So we'll provide the infrastructure, the water, the electricity, the land, everything, and we won't see a penny for 30 years. Where's the incentive for the, the city, the local city to, uh, I mean, for them to grow economically? Do you think it's even a viable, uh, does it make any sense? Is it viable? Is it something which a really a city can survive in this fashion? Or do you think this is something which is going to break down very soon and this is really have to be thrown into the waste paper basket very, very soon? One of my favorite writers, G.K. Chesterton, he argues that uh, when one views a murder, you don't ask whether murder is efficient or inefficient. If there's a murder that happens, that's the end goal. So similarly, I think the kind of 
the what could I say the uh, methods that have been put in place, the structures that have been put in place. It might be too late to sort of scrap the city to uh, in you know it it it's not uh, a blueprint that can just be scrapped. I think. It's really tinkering with larger governance mechanisms, with things that can't just sort of, uh, you know, the next day turn around and say that okay, we're not going to follow that model. Um, if you look at it, uh, look at look at Delhi again, the Delhi uh, master plan. I mean, uh, 60 years are, it was started in 1962. I mean, what we have till today are revisions of the master plan. Right, so there's no. We, I don't think, especially when it comes to uh, experiments like urban experiments, I don't think we can just sort of say this can be scrapped. I think we're going to have to live with a lot of these decisions for many, many decades to come. Thank you, Leon, for being with us, and we hope that we can discuss these and other issues in the future as well. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Keep watching News Click. Do visit our website and our Facebook and our page.